What's up guys, Crane here from LogicLounge.com back with another aviation facts video. Today we're answering the question, can an airplane fly and land with just one engine? The short answer is yes, and I'll be going into more detail and even showing you how they would be doing that in this video right now. So what we're going to be doing right now is we'll be simulating an engine failure and I will show you how the aircraft is configured to land with just one engine. So let's head into the cockpit here. This is uh, Prepared 3D, which is a flight simulation program. Uh, and on top of that, this is PMDG's 777, which is second to none when it comes to simulations. So we're in the Seattle area right now. We're kind of to the uh, northwest of the Seattle area, and we'll be taking a landing into Seattle's International Airport. Uh, we'll be simulating an engine failure right now. So we're gonna fail engine number one. We're gonna give it a severe damage. So we're gonna simulate that right now and make it active. So the first thing we'll note is that we have enunciations here uh, with multiple things. So we'll kind of come down here. It says engine has failed. At flight level 050, we should be between 120 and 270 knots. We're currently sitting at 230. Because this is such a technologic technologically advanced aircraft, there you go, uh, it automatically adjusts speed and is adjusting things within its computer systems for the engine failure. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to head into the electronic checklist here, which is already brought up here. This is our engine failure checklist. So engine speed is below idle. This is the left engine. Uh, thrust is lost on both engines. No. So the first thing we want to do is turn off the left auto throttle arm switch. This is the same procedures that would be happening in the real airplane that we're doing now. So there's the auto throttle switch that uh, controls the uh, speed of the aircraft. So that is turned off. The next one is the thrust lever it needs to come down to idle. So I'm going to do that now, bringing that down to idle. Now fuel control switch. So we're going to confirm left and off. So we're cutting off all uh, the fuel to the engine just so there's something extra wrong with that engine. It is uh, turned off and isn't able to become any more dangerous than it already is. So uh, we're not going to try a restart, of course. So that uh, brings us down a couple. There's other things down here. So our next one is five. So both engines are running normally. No. APU selector. So the first thing we want to do is turn on the APU. This provides extra power to the aircraft. So we're going to turn that on now. That's going to take just a couple minutes to spool up, but we'll head down to our electronic checklist. Uh, transponder mode selector TA only. So we'll do that by coming down to our transponder and to TA only. All right, plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Got it, we are. Uh, for this one, because of our weight, we'll be landing with flaps 20. And our ground proximity flap override switch needs to go into override. And I believe the ground flap override switch is right here. So we're going to override it, meaning that it won't give us a flap configuration issue when we go to land. And that completes our checklist. We're not gonna be uh, landing with flaps 30 because our performance uh, we want to land with flaps 20 and a VREF plus 20 uh, for the landing. So we're going to be doing that as we get started. So now we're kind of at the perfect moment where we can join up the... Yes, we can join this up. So we're going to slow our speed just a little bit down to 220 knots. And as we do that, I'm going to put down flaps one. So basically, the pilots now have the aircraft in a controllable state. With this engine off, we are flying normally. We could fly for a lot longer. But just for the safety reasons, we want to land at the nearest suitable airport. And that's what we're doing now. We're landing at the nearest suitable airport, which, be, which would be Seattle's airport. Now, as I check off my things here, we want to be at 4,000 feet. So we'll do that, a vertical descent to 4,000. We're going to slow our speed still to 190 knots. And we're gonna incrementally put out some of them flaps. So the aircraft is powerful enough uh, to run on one engine. And that is how most aircraft are. If they have one engine, then you can lose that other engine 
or if you have two engines, excuse me, you can lose one engine and uh, you will be just fine. And that is the amazing thing about aircraft is that we made engines so powerful that they don't really need the second engine. The second engine is only there for the initial thrust when it comes off, uh, when you're taking off. But in general cases, you can fly with just one engine because of the power that is put behind those engines. For aircraft that have four engines, such as the 747 or the A340, the same kind of applies where you can lose two engines and still be able to fly that aircraft just fine. So that is just a fun fact for you guys as we come down here. So I'm kind of getting us set up right now. Uh, and I'm kind of finessing this because I'm doing this mostly off memory. And like I said, this is not a training guide. This is not uh, an, the official what you're supposed to do. This is kind of the uh, uh, short abbreviated thing to kind of show that it can happen and show that it is possible that the aircraft is safe where it doesn't need uh, to have anything uh catastrophically go wrong like an engine failing for the plane to go down it won't it won't it just won't uh, what will happen is the other engine will uh, be powered up the engine will use more power uh, to keep the plane in flight so that is what it's doing now the, so the right engine the computers on the aircraft are using the right engine to compensate for anything we do now the plane is going to tend to pull to the left because we are uh, only using power on one side of said aircraft. So another fact for you guys. Uh, what pilots can do is they can come down here to the rudder, the rudder trim right here, and you can give it a little bit of nose right rudder. So that's what I'm going to do. So it's already adjusted it to five degrees rudder trim to nose right to compensate for the power only on the left side or the right side, excuse me, of the aircraft. So modern aircraft are that technologically advanced where they can do a lot of this stuff on their own, which is crazy. So I'm actually gonna let the plane actually auto land itself because this is kind of what it would do in real life scenarios is that they would let the plane auto land itself so that they're not overcorrecting for that one engine being out. So at this state, the aircraft is fine. It is in a fine state. Uh, we don't have to do anything but land this plane normally like we would if we were landing, except we have that one engine. And yes, there's going to be a little bit of um, kind of compensation there for that, but our procedures are the same. You would still make sure your landing gear is down. You'd still make sure that your spoilers are armed. The only thing that you're probably going to not want to do is use your... Uh, thrust reverser when you land because you would only use that thrust reverser on one side of the aircraft and it could potentially make that aircraft veer off to one side so that is something that would not be done usually it would be an auto brake scenario so what we're going to do is we're going to make the auto brakes uh turn on right now like so uh our gear will come down here shortly and i'll kind of review here uh that our left engine is shut down, the auto throttle is off, so the aircraft's computers know that and it is compensating for that. As well as our auto brakes, speed brakes, arms, APU is running, which is giving extra power to the aircraft. And this pink information display right here is the information that this aircraft uh, at an optimal flight level of 040 uh, can do 120 knots to 270 knots just fine. So that is something that uh, is wanting to keep in mind. Uh, as we come to land. So now we're kind of aligning ourselves up onto the ILS here this evening. And we're kind of just babying down the aircraft is what we're doing. We're all the way down to flaps 20. Our gear is now coming down. That is just a beautiful view. We can take in the beautiful view as we land this aircraft. So we'll come to the front of the aircraft here. Oh, there's fireworks. And you'll see that this engine is completely off right now. The only power of this engine is actually coming from the other side of the aircraft, all the way over here. That is the only power to this aircraft, and the aircraft is doing uh, a lot of things to adjust itself uh, to keep itself in the air, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and as we're coming down, 
you'll see different things on this display. So now that we're coming through about 3,000 feet, you'll see that our optimal speed now through 3,000 feet is somewhere between 120 knots and 270 knots. So depending on your flight level, it will tell you what your optimal speed should be with one engine out. It's something that uh, will keep you safe in the air when you are flying. So we're now on final approach now, we're pretty much in our final configuration. Uh, we want probably want to be a little bit faster, so we want to be VREF, which is gonna be about 170. We're gonna make that 175 knots, so we want to be a little bit above our flap speed. And we turned off the ground uh, flap override, we would be getting a lot of notifications right now saying your flaps are not where they should be. Our flaps here are only at 20 degrees, which they should be at 30 degrees normally for landing. And that 20 degrees with this configuration of the aircraft, considering our weights and balances and everything is what we need. Cause we don't want too much pressure uh, on those wings, especially if there's something damaged. If we happen to lose the engine, if something is wrong with our other engine, sometimes flaps 20 is better than flaps 30. So that's why we're using flaps 20 today, uh, just to kind of show off that you can land with other flap incrementals instead of just the full flap configuration. Uh, that full flap configuration is just uh, the guidelines. You don't have to do it. It can be in different increments. So this feels like somebody who's done flight simulation for a very long time as just a normal landing. Of course, in the back of my head, I know one engine is out. I have to be very wary of that. So what we're going to do is we're not going to use thrust reversers. We're just going to use auto brakes and we will come to a nice complete stop on the runway. And that would be it. Uh, at this point, the uh, air traffic controller would know that his engine is out. So there will probably be emergency vehicles there. There will probably be people to inspect the engine to make sure that there's nothing leaking or on fire. Uh, there would be multiple safety measures going into place now, but that's it. There's no huge, we're gonna die. There's nothing like that. It's just a nice smooth landing. And it will be a nice smooth landing, which is just something that you wouldn't hear of if this air, if you had older aircraft, the older prop aircraft, the ones that don't have as sophisticated computers in there, you just wouldn't see that. And that's something uh, that the modernness of jetliners have. Now, of course, this is all abbreviated. I'm not an actual flight instructor. Uh, you know, all the, all the safety regulations there. Like I said, it's not it. I'm just kind of giving you the, the whole th thing without uh, everything else. So here we go. So we're going to idle now. So there we are. So now we're uh, auto braking now. Auto brakes are happening, slowing down the aircraft. And now I'm disconnecting the autopilot and the auto throttle. Our brakes are still slowing us down, down to 80 knots. We still have a lot of the runway left in front of us here. I'm gonna go to manual braking now. And I'm just going to use our forward momentum that we still have to actually turn off at this next taxiway here. And if the pilot felt like they could taxi this plane in without any further issues, they would do that. Uh, he would actually go straight to the gate uh, without stopping on the runway, without uh, hindering any other traffic. Uh, he would just go straight to the gate. And I think that's what we'll actually do right now kind of come right here. You can still use your, your one side of the engine. It's still functional. It's still something that can be used. So I'm using it right now to throttle forward. And there you have it. We landed, there was no mass hysteria. There was no issues. Obviously things can change depending on the weights and balances of the aircraft. Uh, it would be working a lot harder, but due to the aerodynamics of an aircraft, due to all of the factors of an aircraft, they'd be fine. It, it'd just be another day, but you know, they've landed without engine and they can go home to their families and say, hey, I landed a plane today with one engine. How do you like them apples? So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And of course, 
I will see you guys in our next video.